In this video lecture here at Tobacco University, we're going to be investigating a fire and trying to determine whether it was an accident or arson and what clues can help us indicate what category a fire may fall into. So accidental fires, typically they're going to be uh, sources of heating system, electrical equipment, children playing with matches, smoking, cooking, all those would be classified or fall under the category of an accidental fire. Now, when we're looking at non-accidental fire clues, well, an obvious one would be obvious odors and gas or kerosene, uh, for example, in the area. Lack of personal objects and valuables, if they're all kind of removed for some reason uh, in the fire, none of those are found. That could be an indication that may have been pre-planned. Also, checking debris for clothing, such as buttons or zippers. Windows and doors being locked or blocked could also be an indication, sadly, of a non-accidental fire. More than one point of origin, indicating it's starting at multiple areas. Uh, inverted V patterns is a sign that an accelerant was used and charred floors can indicate the use of an accelerant so this use of an accelerant could lead us to believe it'd be a non-accidental fire now suspicious circumstances involved well the presence of uh, combustibles uh, to aid and in increase the rate of combustion if there's a lot of paper left around newspaper for example um, or just wood items uh, can help increase that rate of uh, combustion. These are frequently detected by canines uh, trained to detect ignitable liquids by smelling fire debris. Again, if those accelerants uh, were used, for example. Inve investigators can also detect the presence of these liquids from pore patterns, investigating how a burn pattern may, be, uh, may have occurred, and they can remain on the burnt uh, substrate after the fire, which can indicate clearly there was gasoline added as an example. And that would be clear evidence that it would be very suspicious and probably not a, you know, just one that happened by accident. Now, if we're looking at arson in particular, potential motives uh, for starting um, a fire, while they are many, uh, sometimes we're looking at, you know, crime concealment, if something else was to occur uh, to conceal a crime, such as a murder or a robbery of some kind. Uh, sometimes just out of spite to get back at someone, monetary gain for looking at profit from the fire. This could be due to insurance coverage, uh, competitor of a business, anything like that regards. Sometimes just vandalism, uh, where a fire set to someone's property just to destroy it. Um, this is the largest percentage of arson fires, which are typically set by ju juveniles. And then we have the mentally disturbed, and some people just have been found to be kind of have that impulse for whatever reason to set fires. Now we talked about this pore pattern. So pore patterns are typically, we're looking at use of an accelerant being determined to be used. These pore patterns are often characterized by an intermixed light, medium, and heavy burning in a puddle shape that corresponds to the shape of the original pool of the ignitable liquid. Uh, so that is important to try to identify that in the fire uh, remains so you can start investigating this in more detail. Now, indicators of the flammable liquid use, uh, we're looking at an unnatural flame movement that could be downwards or simply occurring uh, faster than would be expected. Uh, kind of the grapping of wood or floor seams caused by the pooling of a liquid. And no identifiable point of origin of a fire, it's kind of like spread out over a region, probably indicates that there's an accelerant or a flammable liquid was used, which indicates or favors strongly um, arson being the main cause. Flowing underneath appliances and furniture is burned. Typically, these objects would shield flames. So some people may want to start the fire under there to make it seem like, uh, for example, the stove caught on fire, for example. For noticing inverted cone-shaped burn patterns on vertical surfaces, this can also indicate a flammable liquid was most likely used. Now these V burn patterns, this classic V shape is the normal burn pattern. So this inverted V or cone uh, tends to indicate that an accident or use of an accelerant was used. We see that here uh, with looking at the refrigerator. We see that clear kind of point of origin. We see that V pattern developing. We see clear evidence of this door having minimal damage, indicating that fire started definitely on this left panel of the image. Burn pattern with the accelerant. So keep in mind that if we're looking at um, possible areas of an accelerant being used, we have different ways we can kind of uh, pattern those. Um, uh, there's allegoring, which is a possible accelerant use, which is looking at scaling. Uh, there's breakaway layers such as spalding that um, it's possible accelerant usage as well. Uh, if we have streamers or tails in that accelerant, again, helping indicate that some flammable liquid may have been used. Or poor plant, maybe that puddle, uh, indicating if accelerant was poured in an area. And here we have uh, evidence of an accelerant burn pattern on a con concrete floor. 
um, and kind of what that may look like. Now we also don't want to forget about electrical burn patterns and they cause an arc damage and the evidence of an electrical fire. So these can also create points of origin as well um, and something to look at and these could definitely be accidental. Uh, we want to be looking at circuits, how well, how much they're loaded, we'll look at breaker boxes. So all these don't get just caught up on the potential use of accelerants such as flammable liquids or gasoline. We can't also forget about looking and investigating the potential for electricity to be the source of the fire.